Stand With April update, the appeal of the Powerlifters two-year suspension has been filed. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Team Canada Powerlifter, April Hutchinson, was suspended from competition by the Canadian Powerlifting Union, the CPU, after she criticized a policy which allowed biological male lifters identifying as female to compete in the women's division. For my sport, it affects many lifters. I know four lifters off the top of my head that will be competing against Anne coming up and that have a problem with it, that have actually written the Federation. Two people have dropped out. One person cut weight so they don't have to compete against Anne. It's not consensual. And I mean, it only takes one person to not consent. And the federations that are allowing this, you know, it's, it's disgraceful. It is disgusting that they're allowing this to happen. Now, April is fighting back, but you can't do it without your help. If you want to help, if you want to get involved in the fight for sports fairness, go to standwithapril.com. There, you can sign a petition to the CPU calling on them to rescind the unfair ban against April for simply speaking about biological reality, and you can make a donation to her legal fund. Now, for those of you who don't know, the exact details are as follows. April Hutchinson was threatened with a two-year ban from competition for speaking out after a trans-identified male-born powerlifter openly mocked women on social media after dominating a female powerlifting meet. I know, it's outrageous. Doesn't count. I know we're not talking about Mackenzie Lee. She's got little T-Rex arms and she's like 400 pounds of chest muscle, apparently. I mean... Standard bench in powerlifting competition for women. I literally don't understand why it's so bad. My son, he weighs 45 pounds. His max bench is like 33. I'm legit seeing some women in competition who are doing something like 50 pounds. And I just don't understand it. Now, April filed a formal complaint against that male-born powerlifter, Ann Andrus after he mocked women for being weaker and smaller than him. Actually, I think they've gone rogue. They've done their own thing. They've created an inclusion policy. Mm -hmm. So you could identify as a female tomorrow up here, take all the records, crush it in the women's category, and then go back to being a man the next day. Now, April's complaint against Ann Andrus for his social media activity was never taken seriously. So she started speaking out, telling her story on social media. However, when a complaint against April was filed for speaking out, she was the one silenced and punished. Oh, but April is a fighter and she lawyered up. She hired Lisa Bildy from Libertas Law to help her fight for fairness for women in sport. Lisa Bildy is a prominent civil liberties and human rights lawyer who has worked on many high profile anti-lockdown civil liberties cases in this country over the past few years. And thanks to your donations to April's legal fund at standwithapril.com, the appeal of April's ban was just filed. Let's read through a bit of it. The grounds for the appeal are as follows. The discipline committee made a decision which was influenced by bias because the discipline committee, the names of whom have not been disclosed to the appellant, was comprised of individuals and executive members who were directly or indirectly involved in drafting and or approving the CPU trans inclusion policy, which the appellant publicly criticized. Okay, there's a lot going on there. Let's just stop here. So, April doesn't even know the names of the people who are finding her guilty of breaking a policy. But what she does know is that the people who wrote the trans inclusion policy are now the enforcers of the ban on anyone who criticizes the trans inclusion policy. Isn't that a neat little game these people are playing? Let's keep going. The discipline committee demonstrated bias against the appellant in failing to address her similar complaint against the complainant. This is also a completely reasonable conclusion for someone like April to come to. She launched a complaint against Ann Andrews after Ann Andrews went online and mocked his female competition, which would have been in violation of the social media policy. But since Ann Andrews didn't get in trouble for saying 
things that would have violated the social media policy. Why should April get in trouble? Let's keep going. The discipline committee exercised its discretion for an improper purpose, the Discipline Committee issued the decision as a form of reprisal and retaliation against the appellate for her advocacy to end the CPU's sex-based discrimination against women in competitive powerlifting. The harsh penalty, a two-year suspension, was designed to send a message to the appellant and other female competitors that if they publicly protest the discriminatory trans inclusion policy by pointing out the deleterious impact a male-born athlete competing in the women's category has on fair competition for females, they will be silenced. And that's true. If you are an up-and-coming power lifter and you think it is unfair for you to be forced to compete against someone who is under God, the benefits of testosterone-induced puberty, you will be kicked out of your sport. So you're effectively censored. Well, that's the thing. If I, if I didn't do anything about it, I mean, there was times where I couldn't sleep at night. I mean, I've been battling this for about two years now. Finally, women are coming out. I get daily emails and messages from women saying, thank you so much for standing up for women in sports. Uh, a lot of women are silenced and feel silenced and that they have no voice or they're afraid to speak up, fear of maybe getting kicked out of the Federation um, to be called names, right, uh, for backlash. Uh, but no. Now, April's powerful advocacy for women in sport has already claimed the job of the head of the CPU, Shane Martin, who attributed his timely resignation to his failed attempts to modernize the inclusivity policies at the organization. Martin was responsible for calling the police on women who turned up at a CPU meet wearing black to mourn and protest the death of women's powerlifting as a man lifted against women. But this is just the beginning. There are more wins to come to donate to offset April's mounting legal costs as she fights to keep female sports female and to sign the petition to the CPU to reinstate April. Please go to standwithapril.com. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunry. If you believe in fairness, if you believe in biological reality, and if you believe in free speech, please go to standwithapril.com and sign the petition calling on the Canadian Powerlifting Union to reinstate April Hutchinson after they banned her for simply telling the truth. And while you're there at standwithapril.com, make a donation to offset her mounting legal costs as she appeals her ban. Again, that's standwithapril.com.